Chapter 11, The Comedy Grand House. When Joshua still used Facebook, he posted a pic of his son Jeremiah, pretend sleeping in a cardboard box on the living room floor of their Comedy Grand House home, with the caption, By now, I'm used to living out of boxes, poking fun at this being their third home in three years. During an interview for a content marketing role in Stanford, Connecticut, with the research advisory uh, Bohemoth The Gardner Group, their in-house recruiter asked Joshua, Will commuting be an issue? After working from home for the past three years, Joshua replies, driving through the windy, bucolic back roads of Bedford, New York, and Stanford, Connecticut, after looking after three kids for three summers in a row, without central AC, it will feel like a five-week rave in Germany. Reality is, Joshua wasn't emotionally prepared to dump off his precious three-year-old Samuel to some random daycare center in, in a hurried flash just yet. They continued to grow closer as their bond became more ironclad every day. Yeah, yeah! He was the happiest boy in the universe. And his do-it-all dad knew he played a huge role in accentuating his super charismatic, bouncy, buoyancy everywhere they'd go. Funnier dad, happier baby. His unemployed state home comedian dad would proclaim to everyone in public who constantly point out how happy his baby boy was. Whether they were at the nearby Harvest Moon to pick up farm fresh eggs, the post office to send Joshua's comedy CD Resist This to Kid Rock, and every comedy club owner in Manhattan worth giving a shit about, or at the deli to pick up his pap's tall boys, the old school hipster beer of choice at this point, and a vastly underrated pilsner, according to a big time beer snob like Joshua, who never pounded more than two pap's tall boys in rapid succession for what it's worth. Last time at the deli, Joshua bought a couple of Paps Tall Boys and recycled some older material, trying to make it anew for an upcoming open mic. Normally, I'd get the 90-minute Dogfish IPA, but it takes me 90 minutes to finish my second. Also, can't they make toothpaste, which tastes like Coors Light, so I don't taste anything afterwards? But seriously, I gave up drinking beer this summer because it got embarrassing, spending so much time hungover, recycling, empty reminders of my lushiness as entire Rocky Marathons and AMC passed me by. At the fancy Italian grocery store, the Chico's and Sons in Summers, New York, Joshua's son Samuel would be hit on by older, chesty Italian women in juicy sweatpants 24-7. They'd say lines like, you are so gorgeous. When you get older, you'll have three girlfriends to juggle. Joshua says, if James Woods had this kid's face, your estimates wouldn't be so conservative. But don't worry, he won't be leaving the house for junior high without his backpack stuff with pre-pounded consent forms to hand out like flyers to see Poise perform at the Whiskey Go-Go on the Sunset Strip back in the day. Joshua's son Samuel was also a beneficiary of what they call attachment parenting, which is turning your bed into a 24-7 open milk bar for the foreseeable future. Joshua equated attachment parenting to planting seeds of self-esteem on steroids. On a rare occasion, Joshua would let Samuel cry out in bed if he intentionally wrecked his big brother's like magnetile creation again while refusing to acknowledge he felt bad about it because his do-it-all dad had no intention of enabling a monstrous anus hole psychopath who identifies with a bunch of Punisher vigilante wannabes in Antifa. Joshua always talked to all three of his kids like grown adults out of the womb. As a result, they behaved beautifully in public because their dad held them to a higher social standard than Antifa. I was never afraid to point out when they were being whiny buzzkills sucking him dry. Joshua trained his kids well. When Joshua used to pick his daughter Matilda up from pre-K in Scarsdale Village, precious Matilda would say, Can I get a treat, Daddy? I was fuss-free today, Daddy. Fuss-free. Nickname creation was an effective technique Joshua used to control his kids of comedy. Matilda was Deltoid's Dawn, Strong, Striking Beauty, Female Flash, Ten Homer Daily, Big Beat, Enchilada, if Daddy wanted her to get some monies on already, so the Chinese underworld had less to see. Jeremiah was Art Show, later morphing into Art Show USA. Before he was born, Joshua came up with the nickname Art Show, and his big sister started sweating his mojo rising already, with her baby brother not even out of the womb yet, and declared, no, it's my show. Other nicknames for Jeremiah included Featherfoot, Twiggy, when his dad playfully stretched his legs out, saying, are you ready for Kumite Twiggy? Which was a reference to a blonde English model from the 80s and the classic Van Damme movie Bloodsport back in the day. Samuel, his youngest, was Chosen Curls, was bound to, woo, have bangers ball, snuggle beast, little pig, whenever he'd snort to make daddy laugh, although Doodle Dad's personal f favorite nickname was Jabba Hot Hot Hike in the House, which Matilda, Jeremiah, and Daddy would call him whenever he'd stick his abnormally thick tongue out in public. 
again. Thus far, the only home baby Samuel ever knew was Daddy's Comedy Grand House. Joshua called the house his Comedy Grand House to piss off his mother. The other reason is because Joshua's family only got the house because his all-star nurse wife applied for an affordable middle-class income housing grant, and they got it, scoring them a hefty down payment paid for by New York State. And if you win the lotto, you cash in your ticket. So Joshua's family moved into what was named the Mustard House back in 1842 before Nathaniel Hawthorne achieved literary fame after Puritan shaming those uptight puritanical pricks in the Scarlet Letter. Then Joshua became possessed with turning their new home into a labor of comedy-making love, becoming hell-bent, intent on making the entire universe laugh for a living through his blog, podcast, books, and comedy CDs, making the best of what God blessed him with, for sticking with serving Lady Laugh with the entirety of his funny man might, despite there being no clear paydays in sight. The mailman at the post office was smitten with Samuel, always telling Joshua, he's so good. You're going to miss him so much once he starts kindergarten. But that wasn't happening tomorrow. You know, recently Samuel defended his dad's honor after dad had to explain how mama broke his blue, yellow, and red toy train gift from Hanukkah, which they picked up together at Union Square because she threw it at his big Jew exalted head after a conversation about telling mama's parents about raising them Jewish. Samuel says to mama in the most direct, heartwarming way possible, don't throw my train at daddy again. He's my best friend. And best friends find a way to hang out together no matter what. To build each other up when they're down. And to make each other happy in their company. It was time to take their father-son dish review show better than Booby on the road. And now Joshua had the idea to do it. With his nine-year-old Bashir daughter agent, also known as Billion Dollar Brain, to ensure this food truck comedy road show was bound for do-it-all dad glory.